seems legit. Hello my legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a hat version of the Siren Beach Tote, which is also an excellent market tote, just as a side note. The reason it's hacked is because we have done grommets with a rope cord instead of having it go all the way around the top. I think it looks absolutely adorable. I have, again, used the fabulous pre-order fabric from Inklings and the Kraken. I fussy cutted these pockets, but I didn't fussy cut the rest, uh, and I think it come out looking awesome. It's got vinyl mesh bottom, uh, and then I use the waterproof bubbles on the inside. So if you would like to see how to do this version, please stay tuned. Alrighty, so let's get started. I have got all of my pieces here. Uh, we've got two Tory pockets. I have used the bubble uh, waterproof canvas, because I haven't used this in a video in a while, and it's directional. So I just wanted to, you know, do something directional for a change. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is these just because they're here so you need to grab one of your main panels and then I'm gonna find the center bottom we'll need this later for other reasons anyway but you also need it for the zipper pockets so because I'm using a Tory pocket I have already drawn my rectangle on and then I ironed it in half you can iron the lightweight waterproof canvas from either side uh, my thick waterproof canvas, you can iron it from top side up, not the bottom side up. You will melt the rubber to your iron, uh, but they are ironable. I guess that's a word. Now I'm just going to move my tub to sit on the side of the bin. Obviously not cover the whole thing or I won't be able to put things away. So here's the base here because the bubble part goes to the top. And then I'm just going to line this up. Now you can literally just line it up with the edge or you can have it a bit higher I like them low uh, that's kind of the point of having this particular pocket but if you wanted to you could move them up towards the top I've put them at the bottom so that they are more of a discreet pocket but again you can do it however you like this is how I do it in the pattern but patterns are, you should think of patterns as a guide rather than the be all and end all of everything I do. Uh, and if you didn't want to do binding on this bag, you could leave one of these pockets open. Um, but you would have to put um, two layers instead of just the mesh. I do have to get more mesh for my website. I've been out for a while. Ah. So that is the zipper pocket. I'm just going to fold it over, cut down the center. I always just like to start with a little cut in case I'm being crooked and I don't know about it. The end of these scissors don't meet anymore. I don't know what happened. I think they've been dropped one too many times. It happens, especially in this household. I am forever dropping things. So I'm just going to triangle out those corners um, really, really close to the stitching. Now, because this is waterproof canvas, I actually don't need an iron. So I'm just going to finger press that really firmly down and then this side really firmly up. And if you wanted to, you can also do the little sides. So you can fold it and create a little crease. You don't have to, uh, but you can. Then we're going to push the whole thing through like this and then from the back this is what it's doing so we want to bring it down flat and then finger press it again and if your corners are being a bit weird you just kind of wiggle them back and forth like a Tory squish but on a flatter scale and it should smooth out your edges like that see it sits beautifully now we need to pick some zipper tape and some zipper pulls. So I am going to go with pink because pink is cute. You could also do a hot pink. Um, oh, actually, hot pink might be more fun. This would be more contrasting, but that is also kind of cute. So let's do hot pink. And then you just got to pick your hardware. Now I've been doing a lot of rose gold lately, so let's do something different. Let's go with... 
silver. So we're going to need two silver zipper pulls. There's not a lot of hardware in this bag, which is also cute. Uh, but I'm changing it. Obviously, you saw that at the start, and I keep forgetting that that's a thing that because I don't record the end, the start until the end. Um, but we're changing it to have the grommets because I just think it would be cute. So you end up not cutting that top piece, which is the um, rope channel. We just don't need that bit. So you use a little bit less fabric, but you do use more hardware. Uh, so I'll still be charging the same price for the bag, even though it's different. Because, like I said, less fabric, more hardware. Um, also less rope, but only a little bit. But I had to buy a different type of rope, so and that was more per meter. So the bags will still be the same price, but I will just offer them two ways. So we're just going to put out, I'm going to put both the zipper pulls on. This takes practice to be able to do this, but I promise it's worth it. I don't use my zipper jig anymore. I'm actually considering giving it back to my husband because it was originally one of his clamps. I don't need it. It takes up space in my cart. So there's a very good chance when I get into my new house, I will not have it with me. I will also be optimizing my cart and I will show you what that looks like once it's done. I used to have all of my threads in my card, and then I realized that that was kind of a waste of a card, so I have different plans now. So I always like to start in front of the zip, and then just work my way around it. Then I'm going to put my needle down, lift up the presser foot, zip it shut all the way, and that way you don't get a distorted zipper anywhere. Also, cut off that tail because it's annoying me. Um, so for those that aren't in my Facebook group, a couple of things have been happening. Um, I will be offering the terrible um, double-sided tape that the Ghana sewing room in the US offers. I showed up yesterday, actually. Um, so I just need to, I'm waiting for some cute packaging. Of course, I'm going to be putting it in green because I can't help myself. Um, so that will now be for all of my customers. It is the same stuff she gets. I actually buy it uh, in bulk from her. So it will be exactly the same, just in a different packaging, but it will have the Ghana sewing room on it because that's who it's from. Uh, and the other thing is, I've been making myself mini tags. Um, so you guys saw, if you watch my laser videos, you saw that I did these big kind of rectangly square ones. Well, I'm now offering, these are coming in the mail to offer, but I'm now offering these little mini ones where you can get your business laser engraved on them. You do have to hand stitch them on because the holes aren't big enough, but these are perfect for like wallets and little projects. Um, I'm already using them for myself and I've already got a couple of orders uh, so if it is something you might be interested in if you make a lot of wallets or a lot of smaller stuff and you don't want the price or the bulkiness of the bigger tag uh, it's now something I can do for you so just you know Depends. If you're just a, ha a home sewer, you might not need or want a tag. Or you might be a home sewer and you just want to put made by and the year with which you made it. These are a cheaper option than a lot of the other. Ooh. Always a fun one when my machine misbehaves. But I am definitely loving tags at the moment. Uh, scissors. You can actually use any scissors for waterproof canvas. So this stuff is a lot lighter than the thick stuff. It's literally half the weight. Um, and it doesn't have the rubber coating on the back. It's got this like fancy silver umbrella type coating. 
and I, I love waterproof canvas. Once I get my stash down, I plan on only ever doing waterproof canvas in linings. Um, it's a process. So we're going to fold. We're going to fold. Again, if you want to, you can do the little side bits. And then we're going to push that through. Flip it from the back. It always looks weird when you first pull it out. And then fold, fold. And so see this side, how it's like a little bit kind of lifted? You just kind of want to basically Tory squish it. That's what I'm doing, just on a flat scale. So I'm doing this to get it flat. Grab the other zipper, bring it on under, make sure that the edge lines up, always an important one. Needle down, pivot. And I went with a hot pink in this one, just for something different. The obvious choice would have been dark blue or purple, but I don't ever like to do obvious choices. And to be honest, the lining doesn't have to perfectly match anyway. We've all just got it in our heads and it does. I chose the bubbles is because this is like a swim bag and they kind of look like you know swimmy bubbles so again I'm gonna stitch all the way around this pocket because we use binding to finish off this bag needle down pivot and I'm always just folding that top back and trim So let's grab our, none of them, none of them are what I'm doing. We're going to make the whole lining. So we want these ones. So these will be like the armhole section. Now if you want to, you can pin it together. I don't really want to. I'm just going to hold it because waterproof canvas is pretty good like that. Now if you want to, you can trim this bulk off with your zigzag scissors. And there is a reason why I did such a big seam allowance and it's because of the outside pockets. So the other option was that you would have to cut out a different size everything to do a thinner seam allowance for the lining because it's a thinner fabric and I didn't want to do that because with a thinner seam allowance your pockets are less kind of attached, well not so much less attached but I just wanted to do a nice thick chunky seam allowance to make sure that they really stay there. Again, with your zigzag scissors, and we're just going to cut that off. This will also help uh, when binding so that this seam won't be too thick. So now we've got this look, and so we're going to take our other piece. And again, all the bubbles, when you're cutting, make sure the bubbles go the right way or it's going to look really weird. Also just trim all of these after you've done all four sides. Whatever works best for you. I clearly like doing it this way. Okay. 
last piece, the last sign. So we're turning it into a complete loop. Line up the edge. Now, because this is thinner and this this thread is so thick, what I can actually do is start in and start with a reverse. It makes it less thick to go back over and gives me less breathing. And I like that. Trim off those tails. Always trim your tails or it gets really messy towards the end. Ah, so that is the lining done. You can turn it inside out if you want to. Like that. And then we're going to move on to the outside. So let's start with our pockets. So this is the slip pocket on the outside. So this is the top and then you want to make sure that you put top to top. Now with this you can do a lesser seam allowance, it's not going to affect the bag. up and flat and then I'm going to pinch it and fold it over and if you do it that way first you'll get it on the edge a lot quicker and then I'm going to top stitch along that edge there this will make it stay beautiful and back stitch So let's do the next one. Now you can also chain stitch these. I do love a good chain stitch. This fabric is also adorable. Right, top, top. Stitch. I like to put the uh, waterproof canvas down because it's the lighter of the two fabrics. And I always put the lighter fabric under the feed dog. And for those that are super new to sewing, the feed dogs are these little kind of rough bits that pull the fabric through. All right, so again, we're gonna have this one on top. We're gonna fold that back, get a crease there, much like we do with the Tory pocket. So crease it, then pinch it, and then you don't have to iron it. If you're using fabric for the inside, please iron it to get a nice crispy edge. Sounds like chicken, doesn't it? Okay, so that is now those pockets done. So we can grab our base. Now, if you wanted to use this print and save fabric because this bag is fairly large and does use a lot of this fabulous print I would do this piece as a solid and then have this as the accent if you wanted to do that so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up along the bottom edge and I'm going to stitch all the way around to hold it in place so I'm just gonna do a basting stitch which is one eighth of an inch or just really close to the edge and then just twist down, come up the edge, like that, then I do the two pockets differently. So one, I'm going to fold this in half and find the center because we're going to need it anyway, but I'm going to have one pocket in half and then the other side in thirds. So it gives a bunch of different size pockets, uh, which can potentially be a lot more beneficial. I mean, you can just do both sides in half if you want to. 
That's one. That's the half one. The other one I'll do in thirds. So let's grab this one. And this one. And we're going to line up that edge. Start here. I'm going to run out of bobbin of thread soon. I'm sure of it. But that's okay. Oops. half for later so let's fold it in half and just clip that bit to find it and then we grab a ruler and an erasable marker of any description I'm gonna use my Chaco pen that I filled with chalk dust from my pounce and we're gonna go now keeping in mind that there's a seam allowance here so I'm gonna go here And then I'm going to go here. And then the middle one. So the middle one's a little bit smaller than the two sides. But that's okay. They're even. Like the spacings are even. And that's all that really matters to me. But again, if you wanted to do it quicker, you don't want to have to do the step where you have to measure things. You quite literally just do both sides in half. So that's one. You could also do two thirds and one third and leave this as a huge pocket. Although I'm not sure what you're taking that's that huge to the beach. The reason I did it like this is because sunscreen, sunglasses, and then the bigger side you can put a book. That was pretty much my logic behind all of that. So that's the two big pieces done. We're actually nearly finished. These are our big sides, but we can't stitch them on until we do the mini pockets. Now I'll fussy cut this one, isn't that cute? And then I put the two otters on the other side. So these ones were fussy cut, so it did use up a little bit more fabric. But in my opinion, totally worth it. we go. And you can skip these pockets if you think you don't need that many. Uh, yeah. And we are definitely going to use um, a zigzag scissors on this curve. 100%. Otherwise, it doesn't sit as nice when you turn it. I have a bad habit of holding this up with my knee lift. Sometimes I don't realize I'm doing it. I do love a good knee lift. I don't think I'd survive without one anymore. Um, a lot of domestic machines now have the option that you can put them on. You can buy it as like an add-on extra. I love it. They're amazing game changer for those that have never tried one it takes a minute to get used to because you gotta do weird things with your knees but personally i do think it's worth it all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm just kind of gonna finger press this in sections flip it over that's always that corner that's a problem now this is the other reason why we do a half inch seam allowance because this corner always looks dodgy Always, every time, without fail. It takes a lot of effort to not make it dodgy. Um, and then it gets hidden in the seam lines anyway, so it doesn't even really matter. So don't be too worried about that very, very corner, because it's probably not going to matter.
I mean, you can do it. It's just not totally 100% necessary, is it all? So, around we go. And I can just chain stitch this one on. just going to baste the pocket to the main panel. So on like this, in the corners, baste around. Make sure you do baste that top corner because uh, it can very easily come out and in the way. one, line it up, bottom edges, lift it up, jump to the next one. You don't even necessarily have to back stitch this. And I can hear that that bobbin is nearly out. Hopefully, I'll get this basted and then I might have to pause and get a new bobbin. Okay, so now we grab one of our main panels and then one of these and we're just going to join them the same way we did the lining. They are a very quick, easy, it's a surprisingly easy pattern, it's just big. See, there's the end of the bobbin. Alright, let me do a new bobbin. Alright, new bobbin achieved. I also just started sewing because I forgot to turn the camera on. So I chopped it off and pretended like this is where we were. So we're just going to join down here, back stitch, and then see how this is quite thick. This is why we need to trim it down. It will the bag will sit nicer if you trim down the seam allowance. And I'm going to do it as I go. Oh, these scissors have become loose. They don't feel right anymore. need to tighten them up. I will do it off camera. It's not a right now problem. Okay, so that's one side. Then, so we go long, short, long, short is pretty much the process. And make sure your pockets are up the right way for obvious reasons. This is like the basting stitch, and then we do because we've got such a big thing, you won't see it. That's better. These are my other ones. I have a lot of scissors. All right, next one. So long, short, long, short, long, short. Like I said, you could do this with like a half and half look. Um, so you could do the top main pieces in a plain colour and then just put your accents on the pocket um, if you wanted to get more bags out of your meter. But I kind of like it all over, not going to lie. I do most of, in fact I do all of my beach bags with it all over. I just feel like it's, I don't know, more intense. option. Alright, scissors, trim off. The other reason I like to do this in sections instead of all the cutting at once is if you've got a sore hand, 
uh, you get like a break. So you sew, then you do a bit of cutting. Then you sew, then you do a bit of cutting. Because down the bottom there is quite thick. You've got two exteriors with the hefty as well as two pieces of waterproof canvas. So it is relatively thick to cut through. Alright, so this is what we've got. So we're going to take our exterior with the right side in. And then we're going to take our lining with right sides out. And we're going to put it inside one another like this. Um, so there's not really a right and a wrong for this. I'm going to use clips, of course. So I'm going to line up the side seams here. Always just line up your seams. That's pretty much the name of the game. If you can do that, you'll be fine. Alright, seam, seam. And I'm making my clips face into the lining. And then the main reason I use clips is this curve can very quickly move. So please make sure you put lots of clips in this curve because they do fit and sometimes they pretend like they don't because they're jerks. You know, or you can just freehand it, although I don't recommend it. The straight section doesn't need as many clips, so I spread them out a lot more. Uh, but those curves, so I've got, what, one, two, three in the middle, but the curve's always going to have a lot of clips. And we're just going to sew the top edge open. After this uh, bag, I think I'm going to go to my nails fix since they all broke yesterday. Jessie has chosen gold as the next colour. Not that I ever wear gold, but I'll do it because he asked me to. I might get gold and sparkly because, you know, if I'm going to do it, it may as well be extra fabulous. Okay, so now we've got our like clips. I always like to start kind of here. And we're again going to do a half inch seam allowance. We just start at the edge and drive all the way on. And off we go. Then you get to that seam. And then we're going to do this bit. This bit's always the trickier part. And normally I would have the waterproof canvas right sides down. I also have to try not to hit the camera. That nearly hit the camera and knocked it over. Needle down. Foot up. Pivot. There's no, there's not a whole lot of interfacing. I put hefty on the outside just to make it stand up. Um, but there's no foam, there's no stabilizer needed. Unless you wanted to close up the base, I would put base stabilizer in the bottom if you're going to do like two layers. But when I put the mesh, you obviously can't do that, so there's no need. Backstitch and trim. Okay, so I'm going to use two different scissors to trim all of this. The first one I'm going to do is all of these corners, I'm going to trim them down so that they turn better and become more pointy. Right, trim it down, done. Then we're going to grab our zigzag scissors and do those curves. Now if you don't have zigzag scissors, you can just make cuts into it so that it's more flexible to turn. But since I do have them, and they are fabulous. These are the Fiskars ones, for anybody that's wondering. Um, I did try cheaper pairs, they did not last as long. I've had the same pair for a very long time, and I think they're fabulous. Alright, so if you just cut out the bulk of the curve like that, when we turn it through, it'll be a nicer, less kind of jagged curve. And trim off the last bit. Okay, so now what we want to 
to do is we want to turn it out. So just pull the lining and the exterior away. And then I'm going to have it with lining side out. So I'm then going to push this inside like this. And this is so I can top stitch the edge the right way through. So normally I would grab the little bit that you put the, um, the rope through to do this, but since I don't have it, we are going to need a turning stick. For those that don't know, my turning sticks are flute cleaners. I do have them on my website if you're after one. Uh, otherwise you can go to a music shop and get them. I do recommend wood over the metal ones though because the metal is a bit harsh and you might damage your fabric stabbing it through. I know some people also like chopsticks. I don't like chopsticks because they're too pointy and the one time I tried it I actually pushed the corner and then the whole chopstick went through it and I had to turn it back out and stitch it back up. So not my thing for that reason. I'm also a rough person though. So these, I can be as rough as I want. I have never stabbed this through a bag, ever. You also might just want to run your stick along the seam like I just did. Helps to push it out a bit better. All right, done. Now I'm going to go up to a little four stitch length and I'm gonna top stitch around the whole top to make this look nice. We're gonna put the grommets in last. You also wanna make sure that it's right on that edge. You do do this step even with the other bits. on the lining to make sure that it's sitting correctly. You'll also notice I go a lot slower around that curve because I want a nice even stitch line. So right now I'm tugging or with this hand I'm pulling on the lining so that it's pulling all the way down to get a nice stitch. I'm not sure if you can see but it's kind of poking out just a little bit so you pull on just the lining part and it brings it underneath which is much better last curve to the back to the start we'll just back stitch and trim off the tails as well fabulous now to the other end we are going to need a whole lot of clips and I'm going to base this together so you want to line up the outside seam with the lining seam and I'm going to bang all my clips face to the inside of the bag and if you go line up these seams it should all magically fit together and I say should because you know you can also uh, match up that middle seam and then you just add clips as needed to hold it together and it may look like wasted sewing to do um, like to base this but then I'm just dealing with one piece of fabric against my other part and I find it easier that's just me. You are welcome to do as you please. So, you can start anywhere. Make sure it's within your seam allowance. You can pretty much go on top of the last little base thing we did and just bring it around and stitch it down. We're just joining the two layers together because it's easier to deal with one piece rather than two. That's literally my reasoning. 
I do this every time. Yes, I waste thread, but I save myself a lot of heartache, potentially missing a layer when I'm trying to put the base on. Because nobody wants to do that. So now we're back to the start. Trim off all your tails and any others you can see. Alright, this is my base piece. This is like a, a vinyl mesh. Um, I will get some more in on my website soon. Right, so you want to find the middle point that way, and you want to find the middle point on the ends as well. All are important. Right, so where your curve is, is actually the side point. So if you need to find the center point between there, you can clip it if it's easier. And then the other end, so we need that center point, and we already found the other center point, so that bit's done. So I'm going to start at a at the side, and I'm just going to line that up there. We're going to add more than one clip, though. I like to add quite a few. Along that straight edge, like so. We always do the curves last. Clip and clip. Then I'm going to grab the opposite side and bring that up and do that edge. Alright, then the center point, we're going to join up that clip to the center. And then just add clips on the curve like so. Same with the other side. I always find this easy to do in my lap. Like that. And then again with the opposite end. And if those all has gone to plan, it should all just fit nicely. Sometimes it's easier to work with clips in the chaos. So again, clip around. We do always put more clips on the end than we do in the middle. Now, if you want to, you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to baste it on and then put the binding on. You can also add the binding now and do it all in one go. I do find that trickier, and I don't want to play that game, to be totally honest. So, I'm just going to stitch. I'm still in a joining, uh, a decorative stitch length, so you might want to shrink that down. Also, try not to hit the camera, which is my biggest issue right now. And when you get to these ends, you want to lift the bag up, because it's a 3D object, and you'll find it'll be easier to stitch around the curve. And then just lay the bag down again. Like that. I'm going to stop and clean up all my clips and trim this tail that is getting in my way. Like that. And then again, don't hit the camera, lift it up. Under we go. And continue on around. And get back to the start and back step. Then you want to take some scissors and anywhere that decided to stick out a little bit too far if you've got any, you just want to trim off. So I've got like a little bit there that I'm just gonna trim off. And I think apart from that, I'm pretty good. So now, binding. This is like a polyester 
binding so it's got all its stretch it needs it. I always like to start on a straight part and we're just going to go along and clip it over. So this is like a, this is a pink, it's just a very reddish pink, but pale pink wouldn't go either. So it's in the same family of pinks that I need. You can also make your binding out of waterproof canvas. I just opted to use binding because I wanted to. So again, all of my clips are going to face the vinyl mesh part. Work my way around like so. You're probably going to use a lot more clips now than we did for the last bit, and that's okay. Use as many clips as your heart desires. There's no magic number. Um, I have seen some people do this with double-sided tape. I have not had much success. But to be fair, I only tried it once. So maybe with practice I would be better at it with the double-sided tape, which would then probably also be quicker. I've got a tail sticking out here. Make sure you take the tails all the way down. Then they won't pop out of your binding and annoy you. Clip. At least I'm over halfway now. If you've got a binding attachment, you can do this without clipping it on. I'm not playing that game today. I could set it up on the cylinder arm. If I was going to make a lot of these, I actually probably would set it up on the cylinder arm. Just because it's quicker, you don't have to clip, you just push the fabric under and away you go. But you definitely want to pre-join it. You don't want to skip that step. Trust me, I tried. It was a disaster. Alright, and then you just want it to overlap a little bit. Trim off the excess and then I'm going to singe it with a lighter. Uh, try not to set it on fire. I do do that a lot, not going to lie, because then you've got to cut off the burnt bit and then singe it again. Alright. Ta-da! Binding is now almost on. Not quite, actually. I'm going to put the rubber band on this so it doesn't unravel, because I don't want to have to do it up again. Now you can start from wherever you like. There's no right or wrong for this. I'm just going to start right here. Backstitch. And then I'm going to use this finger, and I know you can't see, and I'm going to push it up against the binding to ensure that it stays where it's told while I'm stitching. Because every time you pull a clip off, it kind of pulls the binding with it, which is obviously not what we want. We want the binding to stay where we tell it to. Now, I've got to move this because... It's about to hit the camera again. That's a problem that you probably won't have. Needle down. I'm going to readjust the bag. as I go. You'll notice I'm not as chatty. It's because I'm concentrating. Binding does require more concentration for me. At least a little bit. I'm also running out of bobbin again. I can hear it, but here's hoping I make it the last little bit. Trim the tails. 
Then I'm going to flip it the other way and see where I missed. So I missed a lot of places, actually. So I've missed here. I've missed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put clips where I've missed. I'm mainly blaming that on the fact that I kept nearly hitting the camera. But it's okay if you miss spots. It's not the end of the world, I promise. So I missed this whole end on this side. Whole thing. So now you can see all the spots I've missed. I'm actually going to go from this side and stitch it this way. Again, I might hit the camera. And I think I just ran out of bobbin. Did I? I better not have. Oh no, I'm alright. Right, so that's that bit. And the, the clips are not necessarily to hold it in place. The clips are just to show you as a quick way where you need to go to next. Um, and so long as you're using a thread that's the same colour, it's actually not terribly noticeable anyway. Because some of the places are like an inch that I missed. You just want to stitch a little bit before and behind. But I'm going to show you this up close. You can't even see the stitches where I had to redo it. Like, it's very minor. By doing it this way, I can see that I'm making sure that I'm trying to get everything exactly the way I want. There's like a little bit here, so I'm actually just going to stitch around because it's easier than cutting it off. Do that little bit. We're done. Well done. So now we're going to turn the bag out and we need to go and get the grommet sets. I always like to stand up to turn these out, push the edges. Like that so that they pop all the way out. Same with the other end. Alright, so that's the bag. I'm going to move and we're going to go and put grommets in. Okay, so I have put the hole cutting die and the grommets and I've got some silver grommets here. So I'm just going to put the, the rings here. So it's going to hold it kind of there to there. I always like to pull this to the edge of the table. Let me just move this so you can see. Closer to the edge of the table. Then I'm just going to line it up and squish until I hear that noise. And then usually that means it's gone all the way through. Apparently not today. Flip it from the back. Oh good, it's going to be stubborn. Okay, so if it doesn't want to cut through because it's the side of the layers aren't thick enough and worthy, I'm going to double up the bag. Then I'm going to stick it in. Not down a little bit there. And I am putting like my whole weight on that. Although apparently it just doesn't want to go through. I do normally cut these holes when I can get over the machine more. Uh, so let's try it this way where I hang off it instead. There we go, that worked better. It's all about the amount of pressure you put. Uh, so if you can't pull, push on it, pull on it. Works just as well. I'm essentially just hanging off it. The grommets won't be that hard to put in. It's always the hole cutting. So friendly enough, I find vinyl easier to cut than fabric, even though fabric is thinner. I know that makes little to no sense, but it's the truth. So normally I have this on a lower table so I can kind of lean on it. It's harder when it's up higher. So if you're having trouble, that might be why. Okay, so I've got all my holes cut. I'm going to grab my grommets. Now the grommets come in two pieces. So you get this cool like bit and then you get a back piece 
and the back piece has like a rivet in it. Now you'll be tempted to put it in so that it sits down, but it needs to be a mountain and not a gully. So from the outside, we're going to put in the fancy piece and then on the back, you're going to put it so that it's a mountain. It's the best way I can describe it. If you put it the other way, they don't work. All right, and then swish down. Again, if you want to, you can hang on it, but it'll only go as far as it'll go. Same to the next side. So I'm gonna put one, and then that's got two on it. Be careful, they do tend to like to stick together. You wanna make it so it's a mountain. Hook it on, and then put all the pressure on it. So that's two. In and on. By having it as a mountain, that excess that hangs around um, holds the fabric in place. So if you put them in upside down, you'll find that your lining will pop out, which is obviously not what we want. So you always have to make it a mountain. Okay. Beautiful. So that, that grommety, gaskety part holds the fabric in place. Now I went and got some fancy rope it's not really fancy it's like cotton cording rope that I want to use as the handles so I bought both white and natural because depending on the fabric one will look better you can sometimes in some shops get it in black uh, they didn't have it when I went there so no black for me not that I'd put black with this anyway if you can get fancy ropes that would work too so the only difference between this handbag, and I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. I need to work out how much rope I actually want for it to hang on my shoulder at the appropriate height. So I'm thinking about there. You don't want it too far up into your armpit and you don't want it too long. Uh, so I think about there feels good. Um, so on top of that, I need to allow for a knot. So this piece is, I'm going to make it 95 centimetres, which is just over a yard for those in America. We need some scissors. Then I'm going to take the rope and feed it through here. So this is 11 millimetre rope. And I got that because it's a 12 millimetre grommet. So I think, I'm not great with knots, I never have been. I'm going to twist it through twice and then create the knot on the end, hoping that that's going to work enough to stop it falling out of the hole and create a tight enough knot like that. Then I'm going to come from the back to the front, do the same thing. Now, if you're a knot person, you probably know a better than knot than me, but I'm basically doing a loop and then putting it through twice. Because I just don't think once will be strong enough. Bring it all the way to the end. And then I have a handle. And the knot is somewhat cute. Obviously, oh wait, I didn't cut another piece, did I? So I'm doing 95 centimeters which is just over a yard. Five centimeters is two inches. So it's a yard and two inches for my non-Australian inch speaking people. I don't know what that is in feet. Three point something feet? 3.2? Is that how that works? I don't really know how inches work. We're not taught inches in school. I had to kind of learn and convert. You just want to make sure that knot is nice and tight. And I'm having them on the outside because I want to. You could also have them on the inside if that's more your jam. Bring all the rope through. Big loop. One and two. And then pull it 
towards the end. Now again, this might not be the world's tightest knot, but I do think it is going to work for the bag. And so then it sits comfortably. You've got like an elbow hole. Look at that. Beautiful. And so now I've got the greatest swim slash market bag. I also do need to take off the piece of sticky tape they put on when you buy this stuff. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. And then just let the end fray up. You could also probably put some wax on that end if it's annoying you. Uh, and just pull on your knots. Make sure they're super tight. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it doesn't go with my outfit at all. But that's okay. Alright. One beach bag or tote bag market totes really good for fresh produce because the bottom stuff can breathe and won't get sweaty while you're out walking around in the sunshine all right guys thank you for joining me with my hacked version and i'll see you guys next time bye